Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to another factoring question, another word problem here. So we're told that these expressions here, they are the areas of rectangles. And what we have to do is we have to find some possibilities for the length and width by factoring, for the length and width of a rectangle. So basically what's going on is we have rectangles, we are given their area, and what's the area of a rectangle equal to? Well, it's basically the length times the width. And so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take these expressions here, which are the area expressions, we're gonna have to factor them. And remember, once you factor an expression, it's in the form where factors are multiplying by each other. And so those respective factors can then be the length and width. So for example, if we had like, let's say the width be x, this is a simple example, and then the length be, let's say, x plus two, right? So the area would be x times x plus two, which if we expand, we end up with x squared plus two x. So we're given something like this, an area expression, we have to factor that in order to get possibilities for the length and the width. Now, one thing I wanna mention over here is that you don't necessarily have to take out the greatest common factor because notice it doesn't say to do so. In fact, it says find some possibilities for each of these, meaning that there's actually multiple uh, solutions that you can have. Now, I'm going to factor these with the greatest common factor. Let's pretend that that is stated, or maybe it is that kind of question, but I'm also going to show you other possibilities. So over here, we have 12x squared plus 18x. What would be the greatest common factor between 12 and 18? It would be 6, and then notice that x is common in both. So what's the lowest exponent? It's x to the power of 1. And so what would we be left with in the bracket? Well, we'll have the 12x squared divided by 6x, which would give us two, right? These factor, or these divide to two. x to the two over x to the one gives us x to the one. So we'd have two x plus 18x divided by six x would give us three, like that. All right, so notice we got two things here that are multiplying by each other. And so we could say, it doesn't matter which one you state as the length or width, those are interchangeable. So let's just say we got the width of 6x and then the length of 2x plus 3, like that. Okay, so that's one possibility for the length and width if the area of a triangle is given as 12x squared plus 18x. And again, you could take these, multiply them, check your answer, expand it, and you should get this same value. Now, that's if we take out the greatest common factor, which is 6x. But what if we just took out, let's say, a 6 from this? So not, just, not the x, we'll leave the x inside, but we just take out a 6. What we'd be left with is 2x squared plus 3x, like that, right? And that's another possibility over here, where maybe we have the width be six, and then the length be two x squared plus three x, like that, okay? That combination of length and width would give us that same area. So that's another possibility. What's another possibility? Well, instead of taking out the six, we could take out a three maybe, or maybe we could take out a three x. Right, and then we'd have what, 4x plus six? Right, so this could be the width, that could be the length as well. That's another possibility. Another possibility is you don't even take out any numbers, you just take out an x. So then you'd be left with 12x plus 18. Right, this could be a width, this could be a length. So there's multiple possibilities. If you do take out the greatest common factor, it'd be this, but, um, because it's said to find some possibilities, I just gave you a bunch of different ones. Okay, so that's how you do these kinds of questions. So let's actually leave these two rectangles drawn and let's find some more possibilities here for part B. So let's say we are taking out the greatest common factor just to get a little practice with that. Between four and eight, greatest common factor is four. We have x to the two, x to the three, so lowest exponent. 
x to the 2, and we got y to the 1 and y to the 2. Lowest exponent is y to the 1. So what would we be left with? Well, we'd have 4x squared y divided by, um, it would actually just be 1 that's left, right? Because all of these cancel out. So we would just be left with 1 there, and then we got a minus. And then what's the other term? We'd have 8x cubed y squared over 4x squared y. This would be 2. x to the 3 over x to the 2 would give us x to the 1, right? We subtract the exponents. y to the 2 over y to the 1, we'd have y. So we'd have 1 minus 2xy, like that. Okay, so there's one possibility right there. Um, for, let's say that's the width right there, 4x squared y, 1 minus 2xy. So that's the width, that's the length. Uh, what's another possibility? Well, let's, we could also take out, instead of a 4, notice that 2 is also a common factor between 4 and 8. It's not a greatest common factor, but it is a factor. So what if we took out 2? And then let's just say we took out the y's. Again, you could pick whatever you want. You could take out just the x's. Maybe you could just take out xy instead of x squared y. Or you could take out x squared y again because we're changing the 2. Again, it doesn't matter. But let's say we just take out a 2y from these. Well, 4x squared y divided by, well, we're taking out 2y. The y's would cancel out. 4 divided by 2 would be 2. So we'd have 2x squared over here minus and then 8x cubed y squared over 2y. This would be 4x cubed y to the 2 over y to the 1 would give us y. So we'd have 4x cubed y like that, right? So maybe the width is 2y, and then the length would be 2x squared minus 4x cubed y like that, right? So that's another possibility right there. Okay, so that's, um, that's part B. What about, um, what about part C? Well, notice that we can do by grouping here because we have a co binomial common factor. So we could take out the x plus 4, and then we'd be left with 3x plus 2 right there. All right, so we have x plus 4. And then over here, we have 3x plus 2, like that, right? So that's a possibility. And in this particular case, you're going to see in part D, we could factor further. This is going to be by grouping as well, but there's further factoring you could do. But in this case, can't really take anything out of this bracket, can't really take anything out of that bracket. So I'm actually just going to leave part C as one possibility over here. Now, worst comes to worse. I mean, you could always factor out a 1. Right, so if I took out a one from any of these, then the bracket would just stay the same. So a possibility is you could have one, and then you can have this same um, expression, right? Because one times that would just give you that, but your teacher's probably not gonna allow that, and it's saying that we have to factor, right? So that's not really factoring. Factoring out a one, as we mentioned in previous video, that does not count because one is a common factor for anything. Okay, so for part C, I'm just going to leave it as, uh, as one possibility. Now, part D, even though we're going to do factoring by grouping, there's going to be multiple possibilities for this one because we'll take out the 2x plus 6, and what would we be left with? We'd be left with 2x minus 5. And so from here, we could tell width, length, Again, these are interchangeable. doesn't matter if you put maybe 2x minus 5 here and 2x plus 6 here. I'll just keep it like this. So there's one possibility. But notice in this particular case, for this factor here, this 2x plus 6, we could further take out a 2. Okay, so we could take out a 2 from here. And what would we be left with in the bracket? x plus 3, right? 2x plus 6 and then 2 bracket x plus 3 are the same thing. And then we're multiplying the 2x minus 5 over here. So now, instead of putting the 2 with this bracket, we could take this 2 and put it with this bracket, right? Because since you're multiplying here, it doesn't matter which order you multiply. So what we can have is maybe x plus 3 in front. And then over here, let's put the 2 in front of this bracket. And then if you just want to expand these two, 
you'd be left with uh, x plus 3, and then expand the 2 inside, we'd have 4x squared minus 10x. No, sorry, 4x minus 10. We're not bringing in an x. My bad. Um, yeah, that works. So, x plus 3... 4x minus 10, like that. That's another possibility because we could take this 2 from this bracket and put it in that bracket. And it would still be the same thing. If you took this and expanded it, simplified it, and you took this, expanded it, and simplified it, you'd get the exact same polynomial expression. Okay, it wouldn't be in this format. This is in a factored by grouping format already. But if we expanded this, and then simplified it, be the same as expanding this and simplifying, expanding that and simplifying. So all of those would give you the same area. And then you don't necessarily have to expand these two. Maybe this expression here you could write as 2 bracket 2x minus 5. Like that, which is the same as 4x minus 10. Right, same thing over here. You don't have to leave this as 2x plus 6. You want to factor it, you can have 2 bracket x plus 3. That might actually be the correct answer because it says to factor. So maybe they want you to fully factor. But they said some possibilities, so I'm giving you a bunch of different ones. But instead of writing 2x plus 6, you could write it like this if you want to have this factored. And then over here. And then if you want, you can just interchange this 2 and put it over here with the 2x minus 5. And that would give you a different length and a different width. Right, so that's why this one had a different possibility because this factor, we could take something out of it versus these ones, we can't take anything out of both of these right there. All right, so that is part E. And then finally part D, uh, this one, what do we got? We got 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x. So again, multiple possibilities for this one. Let's do the greatest common factor possibility. So 3, 6, 9, we could definitely take out a 3. And then notice there's x present in all expressions. What's the lowest exponent? Just this one right there. So we could take out a 3x, 3x, 3x. So what would we be left with in the bracket? Over here, the 3's cancel out. x to the 3 over x to the 1 would give us x squared. Plus uh, 6 divided by 3 would give us 2 x to the 2 over x to the 1 will give us x minus 9 over 3, 3, and then the x's cancel out like that. All right, so this factors into that if you're taking out a greatest common factor. So one possibility is we got 3x and x squared plus 2x minus 3 for the length and width. Now, what if we don't take out a greatest common factor? What if we took out just a 3? If we take out just a 3, then the x's would stay in, and we'd have uh, that right there, right? 3x cubed, 6x squared, minus 9x. So that's another possibility. If this was just a 3, this here would be x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So that's another possibility for the length and width. What if we took out an x? We could take out an x and no number. We'd be left with 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. There's another possibility. So maybe the width is x, and then the length would be 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to take out a greatest common factor for these, but I did want to do the greatest common factor just to get some practice um, because a lot of factoring questions ask you for the greatest common factor. But with these kinds of rectangle questions, a lot of times there's multiple possibilities for the length and 